there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your settings. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Falling Pieces. I'm Steve. A podcast dedicated to the NBC series Debris. I'm Terry. Exclusively on the Fangirl Zone. I'm Sean Fangirl S. Woo, Steve. We got ratings. Yes, we do. (laughs) Episode 5 brought in a 2.61 million viewers with a 0.34 rating in adults 18 to 49. Uh, Slipping. Not good. Come on, people. Exactly. I don't know. This one was kind of weird. So, I mean, I guess maybe mm-hmm. if you started watching it, you might have thought that you were missing something because I did. Right. So maybe that's why, like, maybe people didn't watch. And they're like, oh, I'll go back and watch because I must have missed the beginning. <laughs> listen, yeah. folks. Because listen, that's totally how I felt. Listen, folks, the name of the podcast is Falling Pieces, Not Falling Ratings. So let's get our game going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Once I actually, because I... I did. I came in late anyway. So when I went back and watched it, I'm like, oh, okay. I still feel like I was missing something. <laughs> so, this was good, though. It was uh, weird. A <laughs> little. I say it was weird. A little. Yeah. Yeah. I so, think hey. Freeze took. It took what? It took a step back from the attention of what was going on with the characters in the episode. It wasn't the main focus of the episode. Yeah, this was a little more character driven this week. Yeah. It didn't exactly result or revolve, excuse me, around emotion. No. <laughs> no. Because that's where we've been for a lot of them. Although we had a, an emotional moment, which we'll get to in the recap uh, of the two of them sitting in the car. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that could have been a uh, explosion. A, yeah, that that was the supernova I was waiting for. I guess maybe that's the supernova. Yeah, yep. it ended up being more of kind of a, an implosion ish kind of thing. But yeah. Right. Well, yeah I don't I'm know with what confused. our uh, CIA chief is doing. That could end up being the supernova. That was really okay. I obviously I said I'm confused like three times, but that was confusing because I'm like, <laughs> what is happening? It didn't feel like it fit with anything that was going on in this episode. No, and not supposed to. <laughs> He's doing it, you know, clandestinely. Yep. Well, and on a top of it, I was tweeting the episode so reading what other people were writing about a lot of what was happening was making me more confused. I'm like, I don't know if I should read anything anybody write. Like, seriously. The, the show will do it to you. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's one of those that it's like, all right, maybe I should just enjoy the ride and not try to put the pieces together yet. <laughs> yeah, I learned that earlier on in the season, so yeah. <laughs> yeah we've got a, like a 40-person group Twitter thing going and it's real easy to get off on a side that nobody understands what you're talking to about mm-hmm. except for one person <laughs> yeah i that was probably one of the things i yeah. like peeked in there going what <laughs> speaking of what we got feedback Yay! Yay! we've got feedback i wish we had like a little song insert <laughs> uh, you can work on that for next episode uh, Terry. okay <laughs> Uh, you want to go through the feedback? Yeah, I'll, I'll run through this one. This is uh, feedback we received about last week's episode, number five, called In Universe. And this came to us from Christina. And she writes, hey, guys, 
I've been meaning to send feedback on this show, but busy, busy. However, in my downtime, I can listen to your pods. What a crazy episode. Indeed. Uh, I really like the idea of pocket dimensions and wormholes. So who do you think the mysterious man is? Is he a disciple of Finola's father? I think she's talking about Ash. Uh, am I the only one thinking he may end up being more collaborator or mastermind than captive? Could be. Interesting. Is he a doppelganger? Mm. <laughs> I have listened to my to our podcast. There you go. <laughs> I have so many questions. Sean, you sure you didn't write this? Uh, <laughs> she continues. I know Ferris was shady, and I, I think by the end of it all, our team is. I love this is going to be in rogue status along with discovering new debris. I think we might have seen the start of that at the very end of this episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And, yep. Anyone else already shipping Finola and Brian? I'm not. No, you Christina. Too? No. <laughs> Steve, don't, you shipping don't the two? Start that no. again. <laughs> Brianola? <laughs> Sounds like a bad cereal. Brianola. <laughs> Brianola. <laughs> ben Ryan. <laughs> ben Ryan, yeah. Oh, I like that. That's kind of like Irish or Scottish sounding. Yeah. I like that. Let's take debris to Ireland. Uh, she goes on, I don't need it to happen, but I'm not against it at all. Uh, who the heck is that guy in the van? Well, that was, uh, was it um, Sebastian Roche? Sebastian. Yes, it was. Yeah. Who Thomas Jerome Newton. Guy. Is, and then she goes, is Dee Dee ever coming to the States? Will we ever go to London? Mm -hmm. um, this show continues to wow with what the debris is, but has me channeling 50 cents raggedy behind, asking more than 21 <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> she closes saying, always a pleasure. <laughs> thank, thank you, Christina. Yes, thank you, as always. She's I been our expert. I do close. <laughs> No, I think they'll have to go to London to have Finola and Dee Dee meet up again. I oh, really you think do. so? Yep. Yeah. They'll probably, if the series gets a second episode, they'll throw more money that they can, uh, if not actually film over there, right? <clears throat> find some locations that they'll double as locations in London or something like that. You know, they could do all interior shots. So that's true. You know, they so could just go into know where it is. They could go into Dee Dee's apartment and they could kick out the guy, you know, uh, prepping up lines of coke saying we got to talk it out of here. So, oh, I don't know, Christina, there's so many things that are happening. And I think we all have a lot of the same questions. So yeah. unfortunately, yeah. we have to wait and see. Oh, darn. I think it's ultimately, <laughs> yeah, what we're all coming to here. <sighs> yeah, I, we definitely think Ash is had you a long standing relationship with Finola's father. Now, if you heard our pod on on that on the last episode, episode five, uh, yeah. you heard my tinfoil hat theory that that guy actually is Finola's father. They <laughs> changed appearances. <laughs> well, after seeing this episode, I mean, who it's knows not, what it's That's right. Doing. It's not impossible now, is it? <laughs> no. I'm feeling a little more positive, not not quite putting on the tinfoil hat like you said last week, but I'm I'm feeling a little more. Yeah, that that could be so. Right. But the, is he a doppelganger? I think that actually fits with what a lot of people were thinking for this episode, because this episode yeah. people do not believe Brian is Brian. Right. Really? Yes. Well, I haven't seen you go that. through tw the Twitterverse. Yeah. I they think he's a clone. I'm twitless, so. <laughs> and uh, when we break it all down, when we're talking about the shot mm -hmm. or the blood sample, because I'm not sure which it, which it happened, because I was tweeting, so obviously it's kind of hard to watch and tweet. I'm not that good. Um, yeah, a lot of people are thinking that he is not the real Brian. And so that Oof. starts to make me think, Oof. maybe you're right, Christina. Maybe this yeah. other guy isn't the real person. Well, I, almost like a puppet. I like. Well, we're jumping ahead, but just on that point, the guy said he didn't know why it was so early, and he says maybe it's something with the blood work. But it looked like Brian was injecting, not removing any. Right. But then again, later in the episode, and we'll I'll leave that part to what we get to in the notes. He mentions 
about Maddox and why he doesn't want to accept Maddox might not be as trustworthy as he should be. Right. About, you know, Brian himself. So I'll right. leave that piece till we get to it. So, but Brian being a clone or something, maybe that's what the injection was for. Oh, I like that. But the doppelganger thing too, seeing this episode, yeah. again, we'll get to it. You know, when Ash like just knocks the hell out. Like yeah. super fast. Maybe I wish I like could sleep like thing. that. Yeah, just, yeah, turn, just I turn have himself to, off. I mean, yeah. I have to <laughs> like, like data. Over yeah, and... yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Captain, I, do you mind if I turn myself off now? Do you know how jealous I was seeing him fall asleep that fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Like, me too. Yeah. Anyway, so thanks, Christina. How yeah. about we jump into this episode and talk about all of our crazy theories along with everything else? <laughs> We'll hear more about Christina hopefully next week. Oh, our first group of pieces. We're inside an old, old abandoned shack. My I future. should have started with. I should have started with. Let's set the scene. <laughs> well, go ahead. Inside an old abandoned shack, a young couple. They they're gathering things, yeah. and we get to see corpses inside, and yet oh. one appears to be breathing. Mm. I seen that. I'm like, is that thing still alive? That was freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it was breathing, but yes, something was coming out of it. Out of it, it seemed. But because it also the man reminded me the of young woman. the um, scene from the first episode when they find that b first big piece, and you mm. see this dandelion seeds floating around. Kind of reminds oh, me yeah. of that. I thought it was like uh, little bugs or something. Yeah. yeah, I still. Well, yeah, you mean the stuff that was floating around the head? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, but I thought there was a breath that came out of that one corpse. It certainly looked but, like it. Especially when the guy says, we have to try again. We need more people. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? Right. You sick creep. <laughs> yeah, I was like freaking out. I did not know what was happening. Oh, my God. And then, instead of staying there, we get to go on board Air Orbital. Welcome to Air Orbital. You are free to move about the cabin. And because put Brian, in stuff in the wrong thing. <laughs> right? He's pulling out some, like, little hot pocket thing from a device that I'm guessing should be more radio-ish than... I thought it was, like, um, a CB radio or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla's like, I don't think NASA intended that to be your personal toaster oven. Yeah. And right. instead, Brian's like, um, yeah, do you know memory foam, uh, UV sunglasses? They were all designed by NASA, and they yeah. weren't supposed to be used for it originally. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, okay, but I really don't think that you should be putting sandwiches inside whatever that is. I'm surprised that thing didn't, because you had it wrapped in paper, it didn't catch fire. Right. You know, I guess the light inside of it, because it looked like there was like a, an element that was lit up on the inside. I guess I that was... turned a di dial as a timer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like, what the hell is this, like a toaster oven? Like she said, it's not your toaster oven. I'm like, you're sure using it like one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it would have just popped it off if he would have said something like, but it makes it so crispy. And then you'd heard a crunch <laughs> like that would have just made, made it. That's like, weird. If anybody knows exactly what that because that wasn't a hot pocket. And at the inside almost looked like an egg roll to me, a Chinese egg roll. So but it was I all know, enclosed. I know it looked. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is that? And I'm like, it's a hot pocket. I know it's not shaped like a hot pocket. And then the inside, when he was holding it where the camera could see it, I was like, that looks like the inside of an egg roll. The hell is that it's thing? Supposed to be like a what are they called? Like a sausage roll or something? Oh, it could be. I don't East know. Coast thing, and I can't think what it's called. Oh yeah, throw all the uh, trouble on my shoulders. Yeah. Thanks no. a lot. A gyro? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a gyro. No. I've seen gyro. No, that's definitely not a gyro. Um, but I don't know what the heck. It, but it was. If anybody knows, you know, you want to write in. Like I said. You know what I'm? What we're talking about? It it, it it was like a hot pocket, but it was all enclosed, and it was kind of either round or square-ish. You know, it wasn't like a like a, a rectangle, like a hot pocket is. And the inside looked different than a hot pocket to me, anyway. So, anyway, he's using you know what <laughs> a radio or something that's not for a toaster oven. But and ob obviously, it didn't warm it up that well because he ate so much of it, and then he wrapped it up, put it back in again. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't know if it was that or if he was like heating up more, but either way, it's like it looked like the same one. Yeah, but 
okay, change of subject. All of a sudden, Fanola starts going on about her father being in Greece mm. and sending her an email before he died. Mm. And it's like, what? You were just talking about food and him, you know, not not saying following directions, but, you know, not using things as, as they're supposed to be. And you're like, oh, yeah, that reminds me of this. It's like, what? I, I was surprised that she, well... What we're going to say for just a moment till the next sentence, her opening up after last week when he says, is that you OK? And she says, yeah. And she says it kind of longingly. And then she starts talking about her dad. And it's not the opening up we thought it was. But right. I was surprised that she started. Too. Yeah. I was like, why don't you just kind of blow him off again? But and we thought, find out it's because Priya told her to do it. Mm -hmm. And if Brian mentioned Cyprus, then uh, that's exactly what we want. It's like, what? It, they're, yes. Priya and Maddox are sending messages through them to each other. Yes. Yeah. The whole thing <laughs> is driving Code words. crazy. Code words, yeah. And then we get the orbital team at the shack. Yo. Because some te teenagers were seen there, and now there's three corpses. It's like, uh, okay, and those corpses are people who went missing just days ago. Hmm. It's like, great. Hey, no. This just doesn't sound good all around. Nope. And everything starts to get weirder. And like we were talking a few minutes ago, Maddox interviews Ash, who is our bearded baddie, who was playing with some big beetle. It's like, where did that thing come from? It didn't Inside look like the cell. in a dirt kind of cell. It looked like, yeah. It but probably apparently. brought it from his cell. Gross. And all he kept saying is he wants Mulu Guy Pan. And again, I was already hungry watching Brian eat that thing. <laughs> and I'm hungry now. Stop with all the food, guys. Well, if that was Chinese food that Brian was eating, then this is like the Chinese food episode. Because <laughs> he wants but He Google did Guy know Pan. about that song he was just singing. So right. who knows? Maybe that's what that is. Now I got to look up what Mugu Guy Pan and is. And see, when he mentioned up, when he mentioned Mugu Guy Pan and he was so insistent about it, I went back back to an episode of Fringe where Peter in the alternate universe is interrogating um, not Thomas Jerome Newton, um, the other one that was the, the other big baddie yeah. and he kept, ask, he kept asking for a cup of tea and he was, you know, not insistent but he kept asking for one and I thought well maybe this Mugu Guy Pan is like, it's gonna activate uh, tra transporter something yeah <laughs> you know uh, maybe there's an ingredient in there that's gonna you know turn them into like a 57 studebaker or some malarkey you know <laughs> so. was it my life as a teenage car or something yeah <laughs> uh by the way that thing that brian was eating was not mugu guy pan because no. there's no way he'd be able to eat that like in hand right. no no that's a plate meal it's like bow or something anyway um so he's talking to maddox and ash it's just like the, the debris is here to set the world free yo like, peace love. what yeah i know i feel like it's very much um yes we're gonna let everybody have this and who cares what happens and maddox is like no this is all for the government and we're gonna figure this out but we can't let everybody have it because weird shit happens so that kind of confirms that Ash and some other people or Influx itself is this third entity, at least, separate from the U.S. and England, you know, that wants their hands on this stuff. You know, Ash basically saying it was sent to free the world and, yeah, your geopolitical governments and all this stuff, which is what we were kind of kicking around last week or the week right. before. And so he kind of confirms that, you know, it's... You know, he kind of makes it sound like peace, love, Bobby Sherman kind of thing. But he's like a whole separate entity here. We want this stuff, too. Right. Uh, but we don't want it, you know. And even Maddox is like, oh, but you want it for good, right? You know. And, and Yeah, that didn't sound too real. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially when we have, like, our government techie who's not able to crack Ash's phone at all. It's like, hmm. Damn. A lot of stuff happening. And know. finally, we get a phone call from Maddox to Brian about, we need more information about Fanola's father. Mm. You know, like, was he ever in the Mediterranean? Yep. Cyprus, for example. It's like, what? Ding, 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 ding. 
Yeah, I'm like, I do not trust you, you POS. That's all I'm saying. Uh, well, they're clearly using passwords to get messages across to each other. So Yeah, I don't like it. So I will be over here stewing for a moment while Steve takes us into the next weird grouping of pieces. <laughs> bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting that it sounds like Prius Priya is like setting Maddox up here. I think so. First, you know, the I do. thing, and then Maddox calls and says Cyprus, and that's exactly what Fanola is supposed to say next. And it's like, how does they got the CIA bugged or something? Well, we kicked that around. Maybe, Maybe yeah. they do. Could yeah, be that. Very possible. <laughs> I'm I'm going to stick with that they're using passwords to get messages across, but it could be what we said, you know, before last episode or two episodes, I think, ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, are they trying to feed breadcrumbs to each other somehow yeah. to help unlock <laughs> whatever? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, setting each other up is what they're doing. <laughs> they're trying to find information on her dad and who's going to get there first. And they're setting each other up to go in opposite directions. So, <laughs> yeah, because neither one of them has the dad yet. No, it has Fanola's dad. He's just known to be out there somewhere. Yeah. Yep. So our next group of pieces includes the young woman is doing the hula hoop while John holds a piece of debris in his arms. I'm trying to figure out why she's hula hooping. Exactly. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. (laughs) I was just jealous because I can't do that damn thing to save my life. (laughs) And she has to stop and collapses to the ground and he notes they're 237 feet apart. Okay. Okay, but he's got the debris, and she's 237 feet apart. Okay, they're getting a proximity to the piece. Mm-hmm. So, but it's... what? She can't move her hips past that, or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, when she collapsed, the, the... it looked more like it was a health issue, not that she was just worn out from hula hooping it was like she was getting she was a little too far away from the debris and it was starting to affect her see and we hadn't gotten that far in the episode i thought the debris was making the hula hoop too heavy <laughs> Could be. Oh. seriously oh like, okay i mean I can see we're, that. what you guys are saying we've come to learn well when we get later in the episode that must have been what this episode this scene meant but at the time i was like so the debris does what it makes a hula hoop heavier it what increases the density of it or increases the gravitational pull or something. And she wasn't able to stand up. Which, yeah. Like I, yeah. I can see that thinking like maybe her body got really heavy over the whole. Or her body. Yeah. It could yeah. increase the density of the body. Sure. Sure. That's, that's what I first took from it. Yeah. And once we got later, I was like, eh, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we see Maddox meeting with the Russian operative again, who's, informs him that rush is ready to make the trade and they'll meet that night Uh, we see finola reading reports of the other elderly people who are missing and the orbital team members find the car of course an operative calls brian from finola's apartment say what (laughs) i was like what is happening yeah at least brian had the the i don't want to say the nerve but like he looked this is all yeah, right yeah so i'm like good about time you get mad right and see i'm wondering because you know the guy tells brian so and so it wasn't maddox somebody else he said so and so from here told me that you were up to speed on it and i'm kind of wondering was that guy in her apartment mr you know keyboard was he supposed to call brian and at all or was he supposed to call brian and but not tell him where he was Ooh, you know i mean that's I what i'm wondering like yeah because brian seemed genuinely surprised and pissed you know that they were in her apartment right like, you know oh, absolutely. what's the deal I thought here? he did say maddox he didn't say maddox i don't think so he may have and i'm just misremembering but i could have but, sworn i mean he does only say like whatever the name is said you're up to speed so yeah. there's up to speed that we need information, and then there's we're gonna break into our apartment up to speed, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Maddox is telling Brian to dig for information about her father, 
while they're going behind his back and breaking into her apartment to see if what the information Brian is getting is actually true. Now, we were saying it on Facebook Messenger. I'll ask you guys if they were saying it on the Twitterverse. Did anybody else say that, I wonder if MI6 is in Brian's apartment? Yeah. <laughs> were they I think it? I did see that, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, he seemed, like, surprised at first and then pissed. So that's why I'm wondering if this operative was supposed to call Brian at all, and if so, was he supposed to say where he was calling from? Right. Uh, and then again, he may have figured it was okay because he thought, as he said to Brian, I thought you were up to speed. So my calling you and telling you where I'm calling you from, well, that's no big deal. You know, I'm not doing anything I shouldn't. And you could see someone thinking that if you're told, oh, our guy in the field is up to speed. Don't worry about it. But right. still, was he supposed to let him let that cat out of the bag? That's what I'm wondering. Right. You know, does Maddox know that Brian now knows they are in her apartment? Right. And does he want Brian to know that? See, that's that's the subtext I'm wondering. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So we see the young guy come up upon an elderly man and sits down as a chat. Mm. And the elderly man is sad about his family. The guy says, well, I can help you with that. Oh. That kind of freaks me out oh that was creepy. yeah because was super creepy you know we see the three dead bodies yeah and it, once we find out they've only been missing a couple of days you say okay a body can't decompose that fast right so what is this piece doing is it sucking life force out of people yeah, yeah I, especially thinking back with him saying, oh, we need a few more. It's like, oh. Right, yeah. And see, I thought he was telling this guy, you know, he can help him with it because I'm thinking, well, he's going to use the piece to kill the guy to put him out of his misery. Right. You know, so like when he's sitting there and he's having this conversation, it was kind of creepy just a little bit. And then when he gets to the I can help you with that, I was like, oh, crap, you're going to kill another one. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I just was. thought it was kind of creepy. You mm-hmm. can walk up and be like, hey, can I sit by you? It's like, ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. You're so antisocial, Sean. Jeez. <laughs> you know what? Six feet. All right, back up. Yes. <laughs> and I don't see your mask. Uh, no, that's true. You got a good point there. You got a good point. <laughs> I think I saw a couple birds in the background on the wide shot had masks on, but that's oh, just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then we see Brian asking Fanola about her story about her father being in Greece. And she adds that he was also in Cyprus. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Nice transition, Brian. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Fanola asks him why he's asking. And Brian says her father is alive. I was floored. That he actually said it. I couldn't believe he told him. (laughs) Yeah. I thought if he were ever to say it, it wouldn't happen just yet. Right. I was floored. Well, she says she knows and that he and Maddox knew. Mm-hmm. And he says he all he knows is the video. And Finola says she knows that her father's not a clone. Mm-hmm. So I just felt just... like it was the whole, like, I know that you know. Right. I oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know <laughs> like, that okay. you know that I know. And this part was pretty funny because on the Twitter sphere... There was a lot of people putting get smart. Um, little me. <laughs> yes. It was like, we need the cone of silence. silence. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> Missed it by that much. <laughs> right. So I was just like, oh my God. This yep. is so weird because I can't believe she's just like, I know you know. I thought she was going to be more surprised. Or, I mean, she was playing it really well. Like, she could have just looked at him and, like, yep. opened the door and been like, you're crazy and close, you know, walked off or something. Right. That was but the, when she just, yeah. When she just says, I know it's like, what? No, and then, don't. and that was the implosion, you know, that I mentioned earlier at the start of our thing here, you know, and then when he gets to action and this was the thing I was like, Oh, Brian, why did you go back there? I need to know. I can trust you with the information, the big T word. Yeah. And she just kind of looks away for a second and she just gets out of the car. Now that's where it could have been an explosion. Yes. <laughs> but she's just like, I'm not going to blow up here. I'm going to get out of the car. I'm going to get away from him. I can't believe you just asked me that. Right. 
Um, and yeah, Brian's uh, bedside manner is not stellar. So no, <laughs> no, no. And we see the young couple take the elderly man on the bench into the woods. This yeah, can't be good. Not creepy. <laughs> Here, <laughs> drink this. this like, yeah. oh, what are you and doing? Gives the man the piece of debris, and we see the real reason he Ta-da. becomes young again. Woo-hoo. That surprised me because I thought I honestly thought they were drugging him. Yeah, going to do something. Yeah, I thought it was going to suck his life force, and <laughs> they knew I where hope. the switch was to feed it to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, kind of. This kind of made me feel like it was almost a cult, right? You know, or at least the beginnings of one. And that's why I thought until the guy went and turned young, I thought, like I said, that he's just going to kill this guy. He's, it's, you know, I'm bringing mercy to the world, kind of a thing, right? You know, these people are suffering and they're sad, so I'm going to end their sadness. Aren't I great? Yeah. You know, and it's like, ugh. But he turns young. I was like, whoa. So Brian catches one of the guys with them and asks him where Caspian Cole is. He says he is Caspian Cole. Oh, surprise. <laughs> but Manola catches the other guy who falls, ages, and dies in front of her. That's got to suck. Yeah. <laughs> and the young Subash is caught. Ta-da. So yeah, that was quite a was bit he... of uh, <laughs> happening was there. He... I, okay, because I don't know if it was just me. Was it the older guy voicing the young guy, or did it just they sounded similar? It, um, it kind of so, sounded it similar, just, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say because it seemed almost like the voice was off. Right. Yeah. I, later, when he was talking to Finola in like that the trailer setting or whatever, it almost sounded like the the older voice was superimposed or something. But yeah, okay. something, so something with the voice. I thought it seemed weird. Yeah, something with the voice was a little bit off. I don't think it first happened in the woods when she catches him or uh, when he's caught uh, Subash, the guy from the bench. But, yeah, there was something at some point where, just to my ears, too, it sounded like the voice was superimposed. And that could have been where he was aging back, but we physically didn't see him aging. It could Mm -hmm. have been his voice, you know, getting older, you know, because your voice changes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not that I know that. I don't know anything about that. So so um, now the next group of pieces is that the young Caspian Cole, after having been caught, he tells Brian that they just can't be too far away from the debris or else they'll die. Okay, that's their so energy. I guess they at least know. Yeah, at yeah. least the couple informed them of exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. And the young Bash fills in Finola about how he was found. And, uh, you know, obviously gives her more information about that. So now Brian talks to Kurt. This is the young man of the couple who we first saw. And he tries to get him to surrender. And he says that he, uh, Kurt thinks that he's helping, not hurting anybody. Um, You know, aren't I doing so much good? And supposedly his theory, he's talking about doing the math, which Brian is like, what math are you talking about? (laughs) You know, and he's going, uh, supposedly, the more people that are made young, he figures, then the further away from the debris they can be. I don't get that. If the debris is kind of like your Energizer bunny for all of you, you know, wouldn't two of them walking too far away from the debris together both age? I mean, that's kind of the inference we take at the end of the episode. Right. But that's what's going to happen to him. Yeah. Well, obviously, he didn't think it uh, through. So. Well, I'm guessing that's what why I thought I missed something. No. Because no. I'm guessing when he first found it, he couldn't go very far. Right. And then when he changed her and then so on and so on, like it kept going a little further away, a little further away. And that's when the hula hoop scene made more sense. Oh, he's testing how far they can be away. Right, from each other. I still don't understand the whole hula hoop part, but yeah. So that's why, you know, again, with the end scene, you know, that the inference is no matter if you're together or not, if you're too far away, you're screwed. So he obviously didn't do, he didn't think this through well enough. Either that or he failed at math in high school. And uh, I'm like, what if you hate these people? Like, you can't get away from them. Yeah, and we see... You know, they catch Cole and Subash, but the other guy falls and dies right there. Yeah. And they're 
you know, they aren't that far apart. Nope. So they hadn't gotten it, that far yet. Yeah. So the guy just doesn't quite, you know, he, he thinks there's a, a distance thing. No, I think it's more, yeah, it's probably distance, but it's also a time thing. It ain't going to keep you that way forever. That's right. So obviously he didn't think this through. Right. And that's even proven again with that scene near the end where, you know, he says to uh, Brian on the walkie talkie, we know what's going to happen. Right. You know, we're going to, you're not going to find us and we know what's going to happen. So yeah, at this point, he obviously didn't think it through very well because it's, you have to be near the debris, not to, you know, not exponentially increase your numbers. That's not going to do it. Right. Uh, so then uh, a doctor at Langley uh, tells Brian that he may be able to return the people to how they were. Of course, that's still being old before they got changed into being young. Right. Uh, but he's, you know, saying you got to bring the persons in like alive and you still have to have the piece of debris. Right. You know, so we can figure out how to reverse all this. So he thinks there's a way that that can be done. So a little glimmer of hope, if you will. So then we get to what we were talking about earlier. <clears throat> Brian is called over to a trailer and a syringe with something for Brian in it has arrived. Hmm. And Brian asks the guy handing it to him, why so early? And the man giving it to him said, he didn't know. Maybe something came back in your blood work. So um, not that having blood work done would be unusual being part of the FBI. Uh, but, yeah, maybe something came of that. Did the guy really know? I kind of think not. I think he's just, he does his job on scene, and then he just kind of passes stuff along as he's told to. Right, yeah. So that's his suggestion. Maybe it's something in the blood work. Man, could be. Could be not. Yeah. And we still find out later, again, towards the end, about Brian and Maddox and um, the importance uh, one has in the other's life. So he does shoot himself up. Uh, with whatever's in there. And then Finola comes right after that, and she says that she found out that the young man and the young woman are an elderly married couple. And, um, you know, that he finally got his, his wife was in, um, was it a nursing home? I think she yeah, said. Yeah, because she, of dementia. Yeah, dementia, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he, but he, so Brian says, well, then he got his wife out. Okay, so now we know what the dealio between at least the two of them is. Right. All right, so now they're starting to get more pieces of the puzzle together. Hmm. And it it gets a little more interesting because Brian, Nola, and the team are tracking them. Apparently, this guy is way ahead of them yep. because they think they found him, and all they find in the woods are relayed walkie-talkie. Smart. Yeah, it it is pretty smart. It's like, okay, well, apparently he knows what he's doing. Yep. And that's when you have the the girl, Claire, telling Kurt, we have to stop. And he's like, no, I'm going to lose you again. And, you know, you see him saying, you know, at some point she could die there. I don't want her in that mm -hmm. place. And that's when we kind of start seeing that he's doing everything because he didn't want to lose her. Right. And because she had dementia, he did already lose her at one point. Yep. And see, I think that she only listened to what Kurt had told her. Hey, I found this thing, um, and look what it did to me, and I wanted to help you. And then when she gets younger again, she probably only listened to what he said. And when she was listening to what Brian was saying over the walkie-talkie, you could kind of see on her face the realization of, well, this is even bigger than what I've been told. Right. Not not yeah, so much. Not so yeah. Not so much. Yo, Kurt, you lied to me. But now the whole picture kind of opens up for her. Right. Yeah, especially yeah. when he says about the other people who died. Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. see her kind of perk up, like mm -hmm. what? Yep. Yep. But Kurt and Claire have disappeared into the woods somewhere. At least they're not going too far because they don't want to apparently kill the other ones right away. Although right. he keeps threatening it. Yeah. But. The hazmat team ends up finding the piece of debris, and we're like thinking, okay, how are they going to pick this up? At least that's what was going through my mind, because right. if they make it inert, won't that affect those two that are in the, you know, in the camp already? Not even counting Kurt and Claire. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And what do we find out? Nothing, because then we get to go see Maddox meeting with the Russian operative again. It's like, oh, uh, damn. what are you doing to me? <laughs> You're too, killing me, I Gus. Could not, I couldn't figure that out. Because it's a, if it's an operative, it makes sense, right? Like, right. they would suddenly be affected. Yep. What are you doing? But, Cut hey, right we get that piece. Russian. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? The people on the hazmat team would turn into kids? <laughs> All of a sudden, they like got these suits that are now like twenty sizes too big for them when they hold the debris. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into like an episode of Bugsy Malone, the movie. You know. <laughs> I want to know who this Russian woman was, though. Right. That mm. Maddox knows very well from his past. It's like, who? Who are you? Mystery. Now, I think Terry had said something that maybe it was a mistress, right? Yep. That's what I think. What What if it was his handler before? Because we don't know anything about Maddox right now. No. Not really. Handler in terms of KGB or FBI? Spy work. Yeah. I don't know. Spy. Spy versus spy. We never know what's going on here. Right. I know. Uh, well, yeah, see, we don't know. I figured she was still Russia aligned, but maybe not. Right. Maybe she Handling but, Maddox in the U.S. Hmm. See, but this, well, okay. See, I, I don't know. This, There's a lot of questions with it. I thought right. the guy in the car was Maddox's main operative contact, the, this Russian guy. And then all of a sudden the woman, he says, well, I thought it would be better if it was someone you knew. And Maddox didn't seem exactly thrilled that it was her. So it could have been a previous handler. Yeah, like maybe he was doing um, stuff before the debris started to fall. See, I just figured that the this Russian operative guy picked her. I'm going to stick with my mistress theory that, you know, he knows that they know each other. So if they're going to physically meet somewhere to have this handoff, you know, that kind of pulls him out of it. He doesn't have to bring the thing to Maddox himself. Right. It's kind of like, you know, I'll be the mastermind. These people will do the footwork uh, kind of thing. But, yeah, Maddox didn't seem too thrilled to see her at first. Nope. Yeah. For a split second, when all we seen was blonde, I thought it was his wife. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. That's what I thought, it too. crossed my mind. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was just uh -huh. that second. I'm like, what? Yep. Yep. Uh, but she has a piece of debris, which apparently is not the whole piece, whatever that is. Right. And it's some weird gravity thing because we had a little bit of a Inception moment. Yeah, I thought it was a leftover from the set, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because she says, I hope you know what you're doing. And of course, yes, of course, I always know. Don't worry. It's like, really? Really? Mm. Listen, Maddox, I don't trust you. Oh. I don't believe you're doing good. That's all I'm saying. Right. And says she always it says she always worries too much. Mm, always? Yeah, always. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I them. think she's his hussy on the side. <laughs> uh, very well could be. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. Yeah. I have a feeling we won't. <laughs> he wants to have a little goulash as a side dish. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to not find out exactly what happened with Debris. Fanoa was talking to a young Dubash and telling him, we're going to take care of you. You're mm. going to get old again. But surprisingly, he's not upset. Because he says, you can't take away what it gave me. And of course, Fanola is thinking, being young, right. and Savage has to explain, no, I want was just waiting to die. This right. gave me like a renewed life. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, you know what? That is a really kind of enlightened way to think. Very. Knowing you could turn into a mummy. Like when they're yeah. done. No. See, when he first said that, he only said part of the sentence. And I'm like, he's saying, you can't take it, this young self, away from me. Yeah, that's what And that's I not thought. what he means. Yeah, no. that's not. Yeah, so really deep, really deep thought on that. I love that. And again, we still don't see much because we know that Kurt and Claire walked off into the woods. We're assuming they walked so they were far enough away to go die together. Yep. But there's still that question of what if. We don't know. What if they didn't die? Well, they had, you know, the thing that got me about them, because that was their realization, which, like I said, 
his math about if you expand the numbers, you don't have to be around the debris didn't didn't fly in the end. But they had that sh shot from behind him of this big valley and the moon was out and everything. And I'm like, it, and they had the trees marked. Right. You know? And I thought, did he intend to take like a first group of people and start like a commune in this valley? Because they looked like there was like a river running down the middle of it. So you'd have running water. Then it's a question of, you know, food. And I guess if he figures if you're young enough, you'll be able enough to go out and hunt or something. Who knows? But I was like, was this going to be like like the, the new beginnings of the new society that he thought he was creating? You know, it, it was just an odd shot. Not misplaced, just odd, you know. Yeah. Not and we actually sure. see Brian find the tree that had the chalk on it. Yeah. And I really and there, think the chalk was there to help his wife find the way back because oh. it didn't it may not have happened immediately for them. Hmm. Maybe they just it was in stages as the more they the more people the younger they got. Mm -hmm. And so oh, fine, I didn't oh, that. it was That's you know, it only took five years off. Right. And his wife probably still had dementia, so he still he didn't need he needed some way to be able to help her get back to him if she wandered off, and marking the trees would be a way to do that. Oh, that's a good one. That's I like that. <laughs> hmm. So you'd have to get like a booster shot, like hold on to the piece every five years. Oh, at least you know. Well, every couple of yeah. years, let's say you know, like put it away. Let a couple years click off on the calendars. Okay, a couple years went by. Hold it again. Pick it up and hold it again. Yeah, that's interesting. No, I like that. That's something we're going to have to pay attention for then. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so let's talk a moment about our team, Nolan Bryan. Hey, no. Who decide to brainstorm that Ferris and Maddox's intentions are not on the up and up. Going rogue. She says Brian can't trust Maddox, and Maddox, of course, saved my life, but something's going on. And I believe Brian said, you can't trust Ferris. And she's just like, yeah, I know. You can't trust Maddox. And he's like, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. And then he says Maddox saved his life. That's what I think ties back to the syringe. Yep. Oh. Oh. Absolutely. Okay, so maybe different from the clone thing then. Right. Well, you could still go with the clone theory that maybe, you know, the original Brian was sick and this Brian, who's a clone, is healthy again. But he has some sort of whatever molecular breakdown or something or other that he right. needs shots every so often because that's why he asked the guy, why so early? So obviously he's expecting these shots at certain intervals. And when he says, you know, when he kind of rebuffs Finola's thing about, well, you can't trust Maddox either. And he says, but he saved my life. That, I think, is what the syringe is. That's kind of the end result of whatever Maddox did or arranged to save his life. Maybe, you know, that scar he's got on his chin. Right. You know, maybe that that's a, a, a final physical piece of something he was injured by in Afghanistan. Or, hmm. or uh -oh. seeing that we've already gotten a little story about his former partner. Mm. maybe Brian tried to save his former yeah. partner and got infected by something from the piece of debris Good and man. the shots are what's keeping him alive. Yeah. Cause the, the, each piece of debris does something. Not all of what the debris will do will necessarily be good or just simply different. Right. It'd be bad. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. See, that's, you know, the syringe, I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And I didn't, I'm not on Twitter, so I didn't see all those theories about being a clone. But so it could still feed into the clone. Oh, sure. Could be what Steve, could be that he's injured and the debris got in him or something or other. You know, think back to Charlie France, alternate Charlie with yeah. uh, bugs, bugs in his blood. <laughs> yep. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, or it could be that, you know, he got injured in some way, maybe in Afghanistan, uh, while he was serving and Maddox, you know, saved his life. And then, oh, by the way, he, you know, suggested there's this opportunity to work on this thing called Orbital, 
you know, and blah, blah, blah. And he even tells Finola early in the series, you know, I want to make sure this technology gets to the good guys. I want to do something. I don't want to just sit around. So, yeah, that's there's a whole bunch of possibilities. But she's right. You know, she can't trust um, Ferris and he can't trust Maddox. So that's where I think Christina's idea of maybe they're going to go rogue. rogue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, especially with the last line. Yeah. Of course, you know. <laughs> oh, she says man. we have to trust each other, but is there anything else you need to tell me? Yep. Yes, they're surveilling your apartment. It's like, oh, <gasps> he told her. Yeah. <laughs> like I was surprised he told her. Yeah. I, that's twice. First about the father being alive, and then this. You know, because yeah, so he doesn't. I'm he doesn't. Wonder. Yeah, he he seems to not. It kind of goes with the with the program of finding out something or being told and he keeps it to himself initially. So here he finds out the same day, cause now it's nighttime that they're talking in the car uh, where he drops this bomb about surveillance. He just found out about it hours earlier. Right. And now he's telling her that. Yeah. He came completely clean to her in this Ooh. episode. Wow. Yeah, wow. I think he was getting pissed with Maddox and everything, so that's why. Well, I had said a, a few episodes back, there was the scene after he got the um, the the MRI or CAT scan or whatever when they right. were checking him out, and Maddox was telling him something or other, and then I think he went into about Fanola's dead and we got to keep it hush hush. That the way he looked at Maddox, you know, it was uh, a little side eyed, yeah. Yeah, and so now here's this discussion they have between the two of them, and he just found out hours earlier about they're in her apartment, which completely caught him off surprise, off guard. Right. And and so she's they're brainstorming about yeah the powers that be something smells rotten in Denmark. <laughs> no offense to Denmark if we have any listeners there. Um, and then all of a sudden, Friends is there anything the else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then for her to say that, and he opens up again, you know, I thought after he mentioned about the dad, that had been it. Right. But I thought she would. Yeah. He spills everything. Let out. it all out. Whoa. So there's Whoa. hope <laughs> for Brian, at least. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, uh, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of think, uh, I don't, I don't really have much of a tinfoil that hat theory, even though that was my, my charge for this week. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, you know, I think that they are going to go rogue. I was kind of, it's funny, we had the feedback on that. Uh, I do think that um, if they go rogue, I think whatever Brian is getting the shots for, and again, this is not really a tinfoil hat theory, <clears throat> I think whatever he's getting the shots for, if they go rogue, Maddox is going to say, you're not going to get any more. Right. And that's either going to cause Brian to begrudgingly agree or not agree, and then we'll see what happens to him. Right. And then, you know, is he a clone or not? Uh, was it strictly an injury in Afghanistan that he's not going to get medicine for? You know, whatever. Um, and then the whole thing with the Russian operative being this woman, I don't know if that's going to play into Brian and Finola possibly going rogue, but she might be... Uh, some kind of a thing where if there is a mistress scenario between Maddox and her, that uh, she might, you know, go rogue on him. Right. And maybe not necessarily handing over pieces of debris to Brian and Finola, but, you know, maybe at least passing some information. And there's certain a possibility, this is strictly just um, suspenseful writing theory, that the Russian operative, the guy in the car, he might turn on Maddox for some odd reason, you know, but it's funny that Maddox, you know, he gets that last piece of whatever information he gets. And then he gets off this elevator. It looks like he's looks to me like he's going into his house. They had it shot kind of out of focus hmm. when he gets off that elevator or something or other. And yeah, it looked like he was going into his house. You know, that was kind of weird. Um, or was he going back into the hotel office. room? Yeah. The or the office at his work. Yeah. Office at his work. Yeah, maybe he'll be throwing the chair. Maybe he likes that chair thing. Yeah. <laughs> he throws the chair. He's like, I'm playing bowling. This is fun. So um, yeah. And I'll give you one, I'll give you one tin uh tin hat the tinfoil hat theory. I have a funny feeling that something about the debris is gonna make Maddox and his wife's son snap out of it. 
not in the sense that Maddox would use a piece to make his son snap out of it, but I think that something's going to happen that he's going to snap out of it. And he has heard, even though he might not be able to verbally respond, everything that's gone on between his dad and his mom. Right. And he might, I don't know what kind of secrets he would have to tell anybody else, probably none. Uh, and he probably might not comprehend. You know, I'm sure Maddox keeps pretty tight-lipped around the house. He seems like he does. He just talks about, you know, work, and his wife's like, not everything's a conspiracy. So I think that there's something where even the son might play into this whole possibly going rogue thing. Right. So that's not much of a tinfoil hat theory because it's all over the board, but that's what I got. I, I, I was watching the episode. I was like, I don't really have a— Christina, with her feedback, I was like, well, that's my tinfoil, tinfoil hat theory, is that they're going to go wrong. So, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you guys go off on theories. Oh, we were just going crazy. Down the rabbit hole. We got this piece of debris that makes us think of all this wacky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how we feel about the episode. We want to know how you feel about the episode. So shoot us an email at contact us at fangirlzone.com. Because we would love, love, love to hear from you and everybody else's tinfoil hat theories. Come on. I know you got some good ones. Share yeah. them with us. And while you're at it, if you can rate or review us on all of your podcast platforms, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends about the show. This is really good and weird, and I think everybody will love it. I hope. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and please tell your friends about our show, the podcast, because we, of course, hope you're enjoying the podcast. And for this episode of Falling Pieces, I'm Steve. I'm a, just a guy who wants some Moogoo Guy Pan. I'm Sean Fangirl S. Do you have anything for these wrinkles? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Terry. I think I just located that abandoned shack on Realtor.com. <laughs>